throughout the whole film, I was always meditating and always praying the whole time. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, as you would say, staying in character. Um, and this was important because I knew that for only the people that would be able to see Jesus is through the prayer, the daily prayer and the fasting. And the fasting was immediate because of the sickness. Um, at the end of the movie, when I was on the cross, um, my body is blue. There was no makeup. My body was actually blue. They, between takes, as I'm here, um, they would put, uh, they would take me down, and my, every time my shoulder was locked in, there was a thousand foot cliff, and it would hit the cross, and would snap my shoulder out of joint, and I was, in, I was just beyond. And at that point, I was so sick that it would be ripped out, and I, 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 I honestly, I could barely feel it anyway. I was so gone, but something was wrong with my heart. And the man put a stethoscope on my heart, and he said, Mel, he can die. And at that point, you know, Mel, the, some of the greatest things about Mel Gibson was that he was a gambling man. And he said, Jim, what do you think? And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going between me and this is between me and God because I never thought I was good enough well. and at that moment it was I'm ready to go home so you can take me here there's no problem but I knew if I died making this movie I knew that people would be so many people would be safe yeah. at the end of the movie I was walking up the, the, the mountainside as I got up about halfway, everybody's in, um, everybody's in lo location, uh, about 250 people. About halfway up, I felt this presence come over me, that evil presence, and it was, you're a dead man. And I remember thinking, this is the best news. This is where I was. This is the best news I've ever had because I know if I die, I'm going to heaven. Oh. I got to the top. Um, about the fifth take, the clouds were so low, the thunder and lightning was uh, the sound of a howitzer. It was so powerful that you could feel the earth move. Yeah. And I saw uh, two people that were about as close as these two are to me, and their eyes were looking up, and they were watering like they were going to cry. And my hair, I couldn't feel it, and I heard a huge gasp in the audience because they saw something and I couldn't hear anything. It was like an eye of a storm. Wow. If you're in the eye of the storm, your hair could be blowing. It could be 30 knot winds, and I don't. I'd never heard it, heard the wind blowing. I could just. All, it was silence. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one, and this light came right down from heaven and lit me up. What people witnessed was an illumination around my body and a fire on the right and left side of my head. And for one moment, I was looking at myself outside my body. You got struck with lightning. I was struck by lightning. Yeah. And the, there were three groups of people. Uh, Pastor Miles mentioned that it, asked me this yesterday. Was it true? There were a lot of people that were very indifferent about doing, you know, being extras in the movie. I said, yes, tremendous amount. In fact, there were three groups of people. And there were the believers. And there were the non-believers. And there were the fence riders. They're the ones that are very indifferent about it. Two of those are bad decisions. But um, the, what was amazing is that people who think they're fence riding think that that's not a choice. It is a choice. You are fence riding, and that is a decision that one is making. And, um, but when I was hit, everybody fell on their face. Amazing. The ground shook. Yeah. And... Um, from that point, that was the last shot of the movie. We're gonna in a second. We're gonna look at that last scene when they dropped the cross into the into the ground and it shook. And yeah. you were you were telling me over our conversation that as the because where you were elevated, uh, the wind would blow and the cross would move, and your shoulder would continually come out of socket, mm -hmm. and uh, the pneumonia had set in your lungs and some of those things. Tell us about that. Uh, I, I think, I mean, the, 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 I couldn't breathe very well. Um, the, 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 obviously, people, when you're hung on a cross, you, you die by asphyxiation, suffocation. Yeah. 
Um, but I, w- I mean, physically, I, could, I was struggling. But our Lord was letting me feel a little bit of what he went through. Yeah. And he was sustaining me, but to a point of how far do you want to go with this? How, how much of, do you want the world to see of me? And I said, every bit of it. Well, then you're in for it. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, Lord, I want to drink your, can you drink the cup that I'm going, yes, we can. We can, James and John, asking mm-hmm. that we want to sit at your right and left hand side. Mm-hmm. So it, it was given, but uh, you know, it's funny, I'm in San Diego. When I was a young man, I came out at 18 and I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. I didn't know what Navy SEALs were. They started talking about frogmen. At 18, I told my dad this is what I wanted to do, and I applied to the United States Naval Academy three times. I was going to give my life, but in a different way. God had reserved that in me. I, I, I see those guys when they go through buds, and I said, there's no way you can make it through unless you're willing to say, it's okay if I die here at buds. Yeah. I want to give my life for something. Yeah. Let me be very clear. Did you go to one of your friends and ask your friend, hear my story? And you say, yes, I went to one person. I said, why do you go to this person to confide in this sin to them? Because they didn't judge me, because they loved me, because I felt mercy and grace. Now, I ask you this, do you think that your God doesn't have more mercy than your friend? Do you think your friend has more grace than God. Does your friend have more love than the Creator? It can never be. It can never be. So, God forgives you. And now He needs you to begin again. And there was plenty parts of the world that pulled you from today from even coming, but you came. Don't you know how much God will remember this? Do you think he is a a God that's just sitting there waiting to toss you off? You are perfect. There is no one else like you. And without you, he would cry. So he's coming to you now. Right now, in this moment. All he has to hear from you is yes. Yes, you've accepted Jesus, some of you. Keep accepting him. Every time we sin, we deny Him. Be holy. Be perfect just as my Father is perfect. My commandment to you is this. You love one another just as I have loved you. And if that doesn't grab you, maybe this one will. Your name may not appear down here in this world's hall of fame. In fact, you may be so unknown that no one knows your name. The Oscars and the praise of men may never come your way, but don't forget God has rewards that he'll hand out someday. This crowd on earth, they will soon forget when you're not at the top. They will cheer like mad until you fall, and then their praise will stop. Not God, he never does forget, and in his hall of fame, by just believing on his son, forever there's your name. I tell you, friend, I wouldn't trade my name, however small, that's written there beyond the stars in that celestial hall, for all the famous names on earth or the glory that they share. I'd rather be a nun known here and have my name up there.